maybe you could say that like I'm an astrophysicist and and I'm okay yes <laughs> My mother was concerned that I was getting introverted because of my weight problem, nervous around people and uh, wasn't developing an outgoing personality, so she put me in a circus. <laughs> so my first job at 50 cents an hour was working on the clowns. Then I got to run the merry-go-round when I graduated. You know. That was good fun. It was every summer down at Phillip Island, they used to set up near the bandstand on the, on the waterfront. Well, I'm not sure I saw it as a major career move. I mean, you can only run a merry-go-round for so long. I was the first person from my family to go to university. We didn't know anything about it, what it was. Came from a family of coal miners, basically. Well, the main reason for studying where everything comes from is because we don't know. And there's something we don't know and it's knowable, I think we should be trying to find out. The Big Bang made hydrogen and helium and then stars made everything else. And so I sort of drifted from trying to understand the stars to now trying to understand where all the elements came from. And our aim, the rather grand aim, is to be able to pick any isotope of any element and tell you which stars made it and which stars made how much and when and how it's distributed throughout the galaxy. There's a piece of piece of carbon in your nail. Where was that a year ago? At some stage it was in something you ate. It might have been a piece of carrot. What about uh, 50 years ago? It must have been on the ground somewhere you know, to later become part of the carrot when it grew. And where was it five billion years ago? It was, it was drifting through space. How did it get into space? It got thrown out from a star. So that piece of carbon that came through all of these processes to end up in your, in your nail was originally part of a star. And it was originally hydrogen. Because hydrogen fused into helium, and then the helium fused into carbon, and then the star spat the carbon back into the, into the galaxy. So everything comes back to hydrogen that was made in the Big Bang, but it was the stars that turned it into whatever element it is now. Because that doesn't happen on Earth. That's, that, that, that takes too high an energy. So that's how I explain to people that what, what we do is we try and calculate how that happens. So that we can predict how much hydrogen gets made into helium and then gets made into carbon. I don't think of my career 10 years from now, I just sort of want, I just want to know the answer to a few questions. And the globular clusters is one. I would like to know how they got to be the way they are. But the big questions don't really keep me awake. The only one that, the only one that bothers me is why is there something rather than nothing? And do people often ask you if you think there's intelligent life in space? Yes. And... I think, I hope there is because I think I'm on the wrong planet.